Cardinal Onayakon Foundation for Peace organizes interfaith football competition. Comrade Timmy Frank says withdrawal of three states from ECOWAS is a shame. Studies from German Evangelical Church uncover cases of sexual abuse. Nobel Peace Prize nominee celebrates 80th birthday. Hello, you're welcome to CTV News. I am Delphine Asu. In an effort to promote peace and tolerance among the youths, the Cardinal Onikon Foundation for Peace, CRP, has collaborated with Ambassador Abba Anthony John to organize an interfaith peace football competition in Abuja. The peace tournament, which was meant to promote interreligious dialogue among, Mox, among Muslim and Christian youths in the Rumitsu community, had the theme, Christian and Muslim youths working together for a peaceful society. CTV News was there. It was an opportunity for Christians and Muslim youths in Durumitu community, Abuja, to speak the language of peace, using football to promote unity and interfaith dialogue. <laughs> Foundation for Peace, the sponsors of today's program. The Nalonaikon for Peace is a non-governmental organization. Our main focus is to take us all back to how God wants us to be, fostering peace in our world. The Football for Peace, which was organized by Cardinal Onaikon Foundation for Peace, was another way of preaching peace through the universal language of football. Tony Abba. Is our fellow. And when we talk about fellow, we are talking about those who are going through the training, one year training on peace building, one year training on conflict management, on interfaith dialogue and mediation and leadership program. So he and other colleagues of his and passing through this training under the Cardinal Onaiko Foundation for Peace. And one of the criteria for them to graduate after this program is for them to go back to their communities and develop a project that will bring impact, a project that will bring about peace in their communities. So, Tony chose to execute his project by bringing together youths Youths from diverse backgrounds, youths from Christian, Muslim, outside Igbo, Yoruba, together to play soccer. In our foundation, we type it soccer for peace. You know what? Because soccer is one of the games that doesn't know discrimination. It's one of the games that brings, that unifies, that brings people together. And so choosing football, choosing soccer as his own avenue of talking about peace in his community is a welcome development for us. So all I want to tell all of us here today, especially the players, is not just to play for fun and go home. It's for us to tap into the message that we want to pass through today's event. When you are playing here in the field, you are not looking for that Muslim or that Christian or that Igbo or Yoruba before you pass the ball to him or her or her himself. Sorry. You don't calculate where the person comes from before you pass the ball. And we who are over here cheering you up, we are, I am not looking out for a Christian who is performing well, who is playing well before I will clap. I am only looking out for the best player to cheer him or her up in the field. That is the spirit of sportsmanship. That is the spirit of peace. That is the spirit of unity. That is the spirit of diversity, unity and diversity. And that is what the Alonaiko Foundation for Peace is known for. The organizer of the competition and a fellow of Cardinal Onaikon Foundation for Peace, Ambassador Abba, Anthony John, in his remarks, believed that living in peace is possible if we can pay attention to our common humanity. We all are meant to live together. We all are created by God, first of all, 
as human beings before religion, before any other consideration. We were created by God for himself. And we are first and foremost human beings before we now adopt whatever religion we have today. I want us to identify that we work for a common humanity. And I want us to also know that together we can achieve more. Peace is possible. Peace is actually underrated. But I believe that with this kind of tournament, speaking the universal language of peace through football, we can attain the, the peace we so much desired in our country today. Football is a universal language. Football in Nigeria has a cult following. It's something that we all crave for. We all clamor for peace. But how do we get to achieving peace? It's through things like this, this kind of collaboration. And I think it's because of peace that so many years ago, um, His Eminence, Cardinal Onayeko, with other um, religious groups, I think they formed NIREG, so that they can bring people together. Even um, um, Bishop Kuka is doing the same thing. We have so many different, and incidentally too, this is the Cardinal Onaiko Foundation that has trained a young man, you know, um, an um, enterprising um, young man with so much potential, Tony Abba, to um, want to do this in his own way, in his own community. So in a way, we must commend him for what, we have, what he has done, and we hope that this will lead to peace. We have to start somewhere so that when they meet in the communities, they're not going to say, Kai, or you are an infidel or you are that, but they'll know that they can always come together. So these are little drops of water that will lead to bigger things. If you watch the Nigerian match, similar to the one we are watching now, played yesterday, nobody cared uh, who the goal scorer was or who was playing the ball, whether they were Christian or Muslim. Everybody rejoiced at uh, a time Nigeria won. Same thing if we work together, we'll be able to achieve more than separating each other on the basis of race, uh, tribe, or religion. You know, in this case, we are here because we want peace. And what, the most important thing we must imbibe if we want to achieve peace is cooperation, tolerance, and acceptance of each other. The interfaith football competition was an opportunity for winners of the tournament to be presented with medals, trophies, and cash prizes. Please, Reverend Sister Agatha, together with Anthony Abba, congratulations. Congratulations for the champion. We have been talking about bloodsheds everywhere in the northern region. If this kind of movement is going on, there is nothing like bloodshed that would have been going on anywhere. So this is the best of it that I can think about. This year, this is the most wonderful and important program I've ever attended. And I'm so touched about it, of which I have decided today to be a member of the, of the group. So please, I encourage the organizers of this program because it's not staying in the pulpit, preaching, telling people what they need to do and asking for offering. The wonderful move is a move that can really unite us together for us to know that we are all created in God's own image. It is when there is peace that we can be able to get more members. It is when there is peace we'll be able to think about getting more members in our churches. So please, I, am, I plead with ministers of God to move out and see what you can do, inculcate this kind of movement in our various churches, so that if we can be doing this, if all the churches should come together and do this kind of a thing, I'm telling you, within, between now and in two years' time, there wouldn't be any bloodshed again in Nigeria. I appreciate the organizers so much, and your gift and your reward will never be missing from the kingdom of God. I left a lot of things, but um, there is unity and there is peace. Everybody was happy, everybody was doing great, all the teammates and follow my follow other teammates. All of them are happy and they are saying a lot of things about this program. So they love it very, very well and they like it.
what is doing in unity and you see you can see fans along everybody was watching and happy so we are great for all those things <laughs> For CTV News, I am Yomi Mohammed. Former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Comrade Timmy Frank, has described the recent withdrawal of three member states comprising the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, under the leadership of President Bola Tinubu as a national disgrace and shame to Nigeria. He said the inability of Tinubu to peacefully resolve the lingering issues leading to the exit of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso from the regional body does not bode well for the leadership roles his predecessors have played in keeping the sub-region united and peaceful. The Ogun State Police Command has dismissed three officers over alleged armed robbery and extortion. Commissioner of Police in the state, Abiodun Alamutu, disclosed these recently while parading Suspects at the state headquarters in Abel Kuta. The police officers were paraded alongside 27 other suspected kidnappers, armed robbers, and cultists. Alamutu told newsmen that the three police officers and a civilian were arrested following a report by Juan Kashimo Emmanuel, a student of Thai Solarin University of Education, Tasert, in Ijebode. The suspects are Inspector Taiwo Kolawale, Inspector John Ogwe, and Corporal Idowu Sunday, all attached to the today Ijebu Ife Division, and one civilian, Adesion Matthew, said to be the driver. This is CTV News. We'll go on a short break and be right back. Do stay tuned. You are welcome back, and if you're just joining us, this is CTV News. Principal of St. Morumba's College, Joss, very Reverend Father Joseph Choji has eulogized the All Students Association of the school for reconstructing the classroom block which was completely gutted by fire early last year. Reverend Father Choji made the commendation during an inspection visit by the president of the alma mater. Sutavis Joss corresponded while Biogak was there and filed in this report. Very Reverend Father Joseph Choji described the Morumba All Boys Association, SMOBA, as a dependable collaborator who are committed to the development of its alma mater. He said the reconstruction of the bond classroom block within a year is very commendable. You remember during the last period we had conversation with you, we had a fire in training that uh, engulfed this SS3 block, which caused a lot of damage to the school, as well as to the property that was inside the, the block. I'm so proud of Small Bar, who came to our aid, and they came. They are the ones who not only removed it, but pulled the whole block down and also rebelled it up, roofed it with modern zones and with ceilings that are very beautiful. The inside is so beautiful as the outside. It is through their labor. They are our envoys to tell us that the school has produced and they are coming back to the school to a kind of show that they are home and they will want to do something for the school. They have done it. Different sets have come after that and did wonders, like the renewing of the dining hall, which is down there, and also the beatification of the school gates. And all these things, all these things are done by the whole. We want to thank them for the beautiful work they have done for the school. I am here to appreciate May the good Lord who has given them the resources and also the heart, largeness of heart, the magnanimity through which they have given, may he replenish and grant them a hundred fold. Responding, the national president of the Morumba All Boys Association, SMOBA, Joseph Katia Gora, said they can never allow the institution that made them who they are like you rightly noted, 
sometimes in January, one of the major blocks in the school got gotten by fire. And we were all worried together. We came around, we took us round, and we saw all the levels of damage to the school. Uh, but with the glory of God, today the story has changed. I remember sometimes back, we had cried to the public, and in particular to the old boys, come, let us do something. And I took it up upon myself as president of the old boys to reach out to my colleagues, seniors and juniors, and my contemporaries. And by the grace of God, help came in. And we felt it was not just to you know, refurbish the, the bond block, it was better for us to pull it down and erect a stronger structure, which we have done today. And this building you see here, we have uh, put it in such a way that it will serve as a model for future developments of structures in this place. It has modern facilities, and we are hoping that by the grace of God, we will do yet more. Uh, like the principal actually mentioned, the gate we are also handling it, we want to give it a fitting look, like a modern institution that it is, with a long history of you know, academic excellence, we want to make it look like that school that has produced great people in the nation. And uh, we're looking at other things that we'll be doing also in subsequent months and subsequent years to come. And by the grace of God, we'll work in partnership with the principal and management of this institution and the church to see that we can prove what is on ground here. Thank you. He called on all SMOBA to join hands together to reposition the school. While the Ogo reports from JAWS. The Cardinal Onaikon Foundation for Peace has organized a two-day workshop on peace building and empowerment through skills acquisition for young women and girls in Tangzek community of Shendam local government area of Plateau State. CTVS correspondent Jennifer Longdap reports that the two-day workshop was in conjunction with the Dominican Sisters of Catherine of Siena. The report. We are members of Cardinal Onaikon Foundation. Peace Club of Immaculate Heart Nursery and Primary School, Bonjour Dampe, two states. Let peace reign in our world. The interreligious workshop, which centers on skill acquisition and empowerment of women for self reliance, is also a peace building mechanism. In a paper presentation, the guest speaker, Reverend Father Orem Stephen, explained that peace is necessary for human and social development. The aim of the foundation is to foster peaceful coexistence. You know, in life, there are two most important things. If, in my perception, if I'm to consider what are the two important things in life, I will tell you peace and health. If you, in fact, it is only he who is healthy that can even eat. So food self is secondary to me. So I, and it's only he who is healthy that can even wear clothes. And because if there is crisis here, you can even run naked without you knowing them. So I think shelter is not even basic. So as far as I'm concerned, peace and health are the two most important and indispensable factors for peace for a mutual living. Convener of the workshop, Reverend Sister Gloria Okoye, expressed satisfaction with the outcome of the program. I am very happy. At least we have more than up to 70 participants. I'm happy that these people are now in peace in conflict management and in the faith peace building. I'm also very happy that 20 people were also empowered with little seed. So that's that was something. I, I noticed that many of them, they were so happy. They were even amazed with what they received. She further called on women not to be discouraged despite the prevailing challenges in our country. I'll have just a sentence to tell them to keep on moving on, never to get discouraged. Because some of the women we noticed they were discouraged, they were thinking that nothing will happen again, but they were surprised at what they received today. And then keep on moving and the ambassadors of the same way they are. Some beneficiaries who spoke to CTV News were filled with gratitude to the Cardinal Onaikan Foundation. Seriously, I feel so very good because what I didn't expect, what I saw, 
seriously i don't have anything to say only to say thank you i'm very very grateful for this gift that i received and i pray that i will make this of it in a way i don't know how to say thank you the only thing i know that i can say is that may god reward them abundantly may they continue to give others may god guard them out of my number my intention is to help others out of what I have and my intention is to make some people useful of themselves so that they will not depend on somebody. At the end of the workshop, the beneficiaries were given various startup kits including sewing machine, soap making items, bags of fertilizer, food items among many others. For more information, do log on to www.ctvnigeria.org and you should follow us on our social media handles currently showing on your screen. Thank you for watching and do stay tuned to other programs on the Catholic Television of Nigeria. I am Delphine Asu.